what's up? Welcome back, everyone. So this is the second part of lecture four. Uh, in the first part, we described the standard normal distribution and talked about the standardization process and basically how we can take any score from a raw score distribution and convert it into a z-score, which is a, a form of standardization that we can use to essentially leverage the normal standard normal distribution and learn more information about the data that we've collected. So uh, this one is going to be more hands-on. We're going to actually be working through problems, but I'd like to start out by just doing a brief kind of recap of some key concepts here. So first we have the standard normal distribution. It's standard because, well, essentially everything's placed such that it's in units of standard deviation. Um, in the same way that, that money can be in units of dollars, uh, we can convert our raw data from whatever units we have into units of standard deviation. And so because the standard normal distribution uh, has, is, is standardized, right, we know what proportion uh, in, you know, between one standard deviation and the mean, we know that that's like 34.1% of all cases under the curve. So what we're going to do now is take some data and standardize it and see what we can do with it. So as a refresher, what we're doing when we're standardizing our raw data is we're taking it and we're taking any of those scores and computing its deviation from the population mean of those scores. And then we're putting it in units of or dividing by standard deviation. And so essentially this is how, what it measures is how far a score is from the population mean in units of standard deviation. So basically, you know, anything below the population mean is going to be a negative value and anything above the population mean is going to be a positive value. So while I apologize, let me go back here. So while these are, you know, kind of uh, clear cut chunks, you know, split into how many, you know, what proportions are exactly on one standard deviation. The standard normal distribution allows us to have much more precision. Uh, and so we can find out uh, specific information about, you know, how much, say, 1.72 standard deviations above the mean would be. And we can use we can take our raw data, convert it into a z-score, and then determine what proportion is above or below. Or we can take a proportion and find the z-score that matches it and convert that back into our raw score format. So the way we do it is we leverage uh, this table. It's in your textbook on page 591. It's table A. And it basically provides data on areas under the normal curve, right? And so it uses a standard normal distribution. And I mean, you can, you can use a statistics program and generate one of these tables yourself. Uh, it is convenient that, that uh, it was provided in the textbook. But so basically, like, if you look up here, um, in, it, it says, you know, the shaded area B represent is, is what you're getting at for B. Now, on the left-hand side, we have Z-scores. And then in the column, we have the area within that shaded region, which is an area from the mean to a certain point. So the area between the mean and another point. We have uh, the proportions. Uh, and we can easily convert a proportion into a percent by just moving the decimal point over two spots. 
So, uh, so in some cases, we may want to look at that, like what is the proportion between the mean and some value. Other times, we want to look at the proportion between uh, a point and the tail. And so that's what it's giving you in column C. So without complicating this anymore, let's just go through an example. And then uh, after we do that, we can go back and I can show you some more interesting properties of this. Uh, but I don't want you to get confused until we do an actual example. Okay, so if we're asked a question that says something like, what proportion or what percentage of people scored above uh, this value, right? Or, or below or above some raw score. What we're gonna do is we can take the, pro the raw score, convert it into a standard score, and then use the table to convert it into a proportion. Now, if we're asked, what raw score would you need to get to be in the 95th percentile? Well, we can just look up what is the 95th percentile using the table and look at what the z-score is that cuts off 95%. And then use the formula, the z-score formula, to convert it back into a raw score. So... It's like what, what, what we have down here towards the bottom with the red arrows, you know, you can go from a raw score to a proportion through Z. And you can also go from a proportion to a raw score through Z. But you're always, in every one of these problems, you're going to be converting either a proportion or a raw score into a Z score, into a standardized value. And so... Hopefully this is maybe starting to click about why it's important to standardize because this is what it allows us to do. Let's just jump in and do a problem. So, so the problem asks what proportion of people have an IQ of 85 or less? Now, proportion is italicized for a reason here. And it's because the first step that you really need to do is you need to determine what the question is asking you for. It is asking you to provide a proportion as an answer. And, and typically when it's asking for a proportion, it means it's going to want us to take some kind of raw value, right, and determine uh, what proportion above or below or between or away from, uh, according to the normal distribution, uh, that's what the, it's asking you to give it a proportion, right? And so here we're dealing with IQ scores and IQ scores follow a normal distribution. They have a population mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Now that is real. I mean, that's, that's how IQ scores work. But so what proportion have an IQ of 85 or less? Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is, and this is, I've, I've taught this class a lot, and probably the number one mistake that students make on these problems is shortcutting drawing the curve. And that is a very, very dangerous thing to do. These will get more complicated as we progress through them. And if you do not draw the curve and visually identify the area that you're after, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Just trust me. Draw the normal curve. So step one, we draw a normal distribution. It has a mu of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, and it's asking what proportion of people have an IQ score of 85 or less? Well, 
so 85 is going to be below here, right? So 85 or less, we're looking in this direction. We're looking for this shaded region right here. And so what we need to do is figure out what pr this proportion is. So we know that X bar, or I'm sorry, that X is 85, right? That's what, what proportion scored 85 or less. So now we use the formula, Z equals x minus mu over the standard deviation. So we plug in z is equal to 85 minus 100 over 15. This is equal to minus 15 over 15, which is equal to minus one. Okay, so now we have a Z of minus one. And what we need to do is pull up our handy dandy table A and figure out what proportion below corresponds to a z-score of 1. So I've got it pulled up here, the table. And so we look in, I'm going to I'm going to try to zoom in here for you. Okay. So column C it's showing the proportion between a point and the tail. Now it's important here to keep in mind, right? That just because this is on the right side and not the left side or the, the positive side, not the negative side, the normal distribution is symmetrical, right? And so a C on the positive side is going to be the same as a C on the, on the negative side. So we look up, we scroll down through this column and attempt to find a Z of one. And here it is. We're looking for a Z of one and we're looking for column C because it's the area beyond or the area to, between a point and the tail. We come over here and we've got a Z score of one point or 0.1587. So we go back to our whiteboard. And the it corresponds to a proportion of 0.1587. So that is your answer. Now, if it asks for a percent, all you would do is move the decimal point over and it would be 15.87%. Okay, so let's do the next one. What about X of less than or equal to 70? So we draw the distribution. Z equals 70 minus 100 over 15 equals minus 30 over 15 equals minus 2. Okay, so now I want to highlight 
This is in units of standard deviation, right? We, we just, the z-score takes a raw score and puts it in units of standard deviation away from the mean. Negative values are under, positive values are higher. So we're looking at what is the score or the proportion of IQ two standard deviations below the mean or less. So we'll go back to our table. And we scroll down to two. Point zero two two eight. Okay. Okay. So let's try another one. Okay, what proportion of people have an IQ of 130 or above? So we draw the distribution. One twenty or above. Well, that's going to be over the mean, right? So I, I mean, it's arbitrary. I'm just—I don't know where. I mean, I just know it's above the mean. That's the region we're looking for. And so now we use our formula. Z is equal to. 130 minus 100 over 15, which is going to be equal to minus or plus 30 over 15 is equal to positive 2. What do you think you're going to find in the table? It's going to be the exact same thing as the last question, right? And this is because it's a symmetrical distribution, right? Now we're looking at the shaded region of C above the mean. It's just a mirror image. The only difference is you put a negative sign below the mean. Okay, so we get a proportion of 0 0.0228. So this shaded region is 0 0.0228. What about an x greater than or equal to 120? So we're looking at a shaded region from 120 or above. So we do our z-score is equal to 120 minus 100 over 15 is equal to 20 over 15 is equal to 1.33. So now we look in our Z table for a Z score over here of 1.33. Here we go. And we come over here, and the z-score is going to be 0 0.0918. So that means that this proportion is 0 0.0918.
So thus far, these have been, I hope, fairly straightforward. The table's a little wonky. Never seen a table like that before. The math's pretty easy, right? But let's keep, keep on trucking. Okay, so now we are going to do one in the opposite direction, right? We are going to try to find a raw score that corresponds with a particular proportion. And so we're going to do the same process, but in reverse, right? We're going to sketch the normal distribution. We're going to shade the region corresponding to the required proportion. And then we are going to locate the proportion in the column first, find the z-score associated with that column, and then we're going to use that z-score to compute the corresponding raw score. So let's just look at one of these. What is the lowest IQ score you can earn and still be in the top 5% of the population? Okay. That means this is the 95 percentile question. Okay, so we have a mu of 100, standard deviation of 15. What's the lowest score you can earn and be in the top 5%? So we want to know if this is 5%, what is this line that cuts off 5%? This is going to be our Z. So let's look in the table. And we're still dealing with the same column, right? Because we're looking from the tail to a point. We want to find 0.05%. So now we're over here. Oh, look at this. Point oh five oh five and point oh four nine five. There isn't a point oh five. But we know that point oh five is right in the middle of it. And we know that this is 1.64. And the lower bound is 1.65. And it's halfway between there. So we're dealing with 1.645. So we go back. So Z is going to be 1.645. And now what we need to do is basically use the same formula, but solve for X. So it's a simple algebraic manipulation of that formula, right? X is going to be Z times sigma plus mu. So x equals 1.645 times 15 plus 100. And this is going to equal 124.675.
So if you wanted to be in the 95th percentile, which is the same as the top 5% of the population, right? The lowest score that you, IQ score that you could have is 124.675. Okay, so let's do one that's a little more tricky. But before we dive in, I want to point out um, just some general properties here because the difficulty in these problems has nothing to do with the math, right? It has to do with understanding how the standard normal distribution works. And so before we do the problem, just think for a minute, what do you think the proportion is of this shaded region? Well, it's, it's 0 0.500. It's 50%. It's a symmetrical distribution. And so, knowing that, if I ask you for a cutoff from here to the tail. You could just as easily use and look at this proportion, right? The, the, uh, what I'm going to shade in red. You could just as easily look at that and say it's point five minus whatever this is, right? Because we know that 50% of the distribution is in one tail. Technically, you only really need one column in the table. So you need to understand that the area under the curve is one, the mean divides it in two. And so with that knowledge, you can kind of shift around how you tackle certain problems. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. So it says, what is the lowest IQ score you can earn and still be in the top 5% of the population? Well, so this is going in the opposite direction of the last two examples. So we can always go from some kind of raw score to Z to a proportion, which is what we've been doing, but we can go the opposite direction too, right? So we can go from a proportion to a Z score to a raw score. So we want to know what IQ score that you, the minimum IQ score you could have and be in the top 5% of the population. So we want, we, we want this to be 0 0.0500 and this line, we want to find the Z score in the table that corresponds to that. And then we can just solve for X. So let's go to our table. So if we look all the way in this far column here, area beyond C, we want to find a proportion of 0.05. And we scroll down and we see, okay, 0.0505 and 0.0495, right? Well, 0.05 falls right in the middle of those two. So if we trace over to what those values uh, are, we have 1.64 and 1.645, or 1.65. So the midpoint in between them is going to be 1.645. And this is going to be the value of Z.
So now that we have z, we just go back and plug it into our formula. So it's the same formula, it's just we've put it in, in so that we can solve for x. So x is equal to z times the standard deviation plus mu. Therefore, x is equal to 1.645 times a standard deviation of 15 plus a mu of 100. And this is going to be, when you solve for it, 124.675. So this is, this is your answer, right? That is the lowest score. That is the x value, the raw value, that corresponds to this, this cutoff point that cuts off 5% in the tail. Okay, let's go on to one that might be a little more tricky. What proportion of test takers score between 300 and 650 on the SAT? Okay, so I'm going to start. What looks like I ran out of space on the whiteboard, so I'm just going to zoom in. And we can work from the zoomed in area on this next problem. So the first thing we're going to do is draw our normal distribution. And if we look, we can see that the population parameters for the SAT are different for IQ scores. So we have a mu of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. And we want to know what proportion of people score between 300 and 650. Well, there's not one column that's going to tell us that. But we do know that 350 is going to be under here. And we know that 650 is going to be above here. And so... There's two shaded regions that we need to find. We'll do the first one in blue. So we need to find the blue shaded region. And then after that, we need to find the green shaded region. And then we add them together. So we'll start with... Uh, you know, finding the z-score that corresponds to the blue region. So z is equal to x, which is 300, minus 500, divided by 100. And so this is going to equal minus 200, over 100, which is equal to minus 2. So now we go to our table and look up what the appropriate z-score is, uh, or what the appropriate proportion is, from 300 to the mean for a z-score of 2. So we're looking, importantly, at column B, because this is the one that shows the proportion between a value and the mean. So we need to scroll down and find a z of 2. And here we go. We've got it. A z of 2. And the area between z and b is 0.4772. Okay. So this proportion is 0.4772. Now we need to find the green portion. Z is equal to 650 
minus 500 over 100, which is equal to 150 over 100, which is equal to 1.5. And now we do the same thing. We go to our table and we find the area in column B that's associated with a z-score of 1.5. and it is right here, 0.4332. So this area is 0.4332. Now the question's asking what proportion score between those. Well, all we have to do is add them together. So, Point four seven seven two plus point four three three two is going to give us a value of point nine one zero four, and that is your solution. So you can see here, like. As long as you know, if you didn't draw this out, this would be really challenging to do. That's probably the number one mistake that people make on these problems is skipping drawing out the normal curve and shading the regions that they're interested in. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, going through some of these problems was helpful for you and you know, I just kind of want to conclude with, you know, what's the point? Why are we doing this? Right? Well, oftentimes when we collect a sample of data, we want to be able to make statements about where a score falls uh, relative to the distribution. We want to compare scores. We want to be able to take scores from unique distributions and be able to compare them. And so we we standardize them so we can compare apples to oranges, right? We can leverage by putting it in units of Z, which is basically how many standard deviations away from the mean a score is in a standard normal distribution. We're able to, to leverage the standard normal distribution to do all to to learn all these kinds make all these kinds of statements like what proportion of people score above or below or between or away from and as we move on in the course right these features of the normal distribution are going to become very central uh, to our ability to make inferences well i hope this was helpful uh, please give me a like and a subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thank you.